My brothers and sisters, how great it is to be with you in another general conference. I've been assigned the responsibility of talking to you about the role of the Stake Bishops Council and its chairman. This council exists for a vital purpose, but I'm not sure all of us recognize the significance and power to help build and facilitate the work in the kingdom. To put the Stake Bishops Council in perspective, may I briefly review those stake meetings in which welfare matters should be properly treated. First and perhaps foremost is the Stake Welfare Services Committee meeting, usually held just after the Stake Executive Committee meeting. The primary focus of this meeting is planning, training of Stake High Councils, training of Relief Society leaders, who in turn train the ward level, and the overall program coordination. Second is the bishop's training session, where specific elements of bishopric-related programs are taught. Periodically, welfare services, principles, duties, and activities are treated. Third is the stake bishop's council meeting which focuses primarily on operational matters. More than anything else, it is a business meeting in which we implement welfare, the implementation of welfare services is reported on, analyzed, and action decisions taken to ensure that welfare principles are applied for the benefit of the members of the church as the Lord intended. Let us look cl closely at this council. As you know, the council is made up of all the bishops in the state. One bishop is appointed as its chairman by the state presidency. Normally, the chairman pre prepares the agenda, conducts the council meeting under the direction of the state presidency, which is given to him through, the, through a personal priesthood interview. He also represents all the ward bishops at the state welfare services committee. While no specific meeting frequency is set forth, this council should probably, probably meet no less than quarterly, and as circumstances di dictate, may well meet monthly. The first responsibility of the Stake Bishops Council is to make certain that the Lord's storehouse functions properly. Through the, through the chairman, members of the council should regularly evaluate and report on management and the operation of the storehouse. Regardless of whether the bishop is served by a stake, a region, or an area storehouse, he has a voice in storehouse matters through this council. Through stake and region bishops councils, bishops may make specific recommendations for improvement. They should be certain the storehouse is adequately stocked that quality standards are observed, that financial matters are properly handled, and that the storehouse is clean and orderly. Periodically, it would be well for the chairman to arrange to take the bishops on a visit to the storehouse in order that they would become familiar with its functioning and to ensure that it is always treated and operated as a temporal temple. Most important, the stake bishops council is encourage, encourages uniformity of distribution practices by the bishops to those in need of assistance throughout the stake. All this implies, of course, that bishops have a stewardship regarding the storehouse. When Harold B. Lee was president of the Pioneer Stake in the days of the, the Depression, he organized a welfare committee, and they built a storehouse. After completion, they dedicated the building. In this special meeting, President Lee gave the keys of the storehouse to the bishops and in substance said, Brethren, here are the keys to the Lord's storehouse. You now have stewardship regarding the storehouse. We have done the work in getting it established. It is now your stewardship to watch and to see that it provides quality commodities in a timely and proper fashion to care for the poor and the needy. 
End of quote. The storehouse is the Lord's storehouse. It serves the bishops in their role of caring for those in need. That is the concept of the storehouse. Each storehouse is a sacred temporal facility essential to the bishop's efforts to care for those in need. While many of you do not have access to storehouses, it is the doctrine of the church that each bishop have a physical storehouse available from which he may draw goods. Working through proper priesthood channels and with welfare, the Welfare Services Department, you may receive assistance and direction to establish a storehouse in your area. The second responsibility of the Bishop's Council is to develop an annual commodity production budget and to provide the needed commodities according to the plan. The Stake Bishop's Council provides input regarding the commodity, commodities they anticipate will be the needs in their wards. Bishops then encourage ward members to serve on projects and work-related assignments. Work requests come through the bishopric. They are discussed and assigned in the, war, in the Ward Welfare Services Committee meeting. Quorum organize quorum members and their families to provide labor on these projects. Thereby, commodities are produced to care for those in need. The third responsibility of the Stake Bishops Council is to advise and counsel with the Stake Presidency in the acquisition and management of production projects. The bishops are responsible to make their opinions known about the right kind of projects and the quality of the products, whether they are ward, stake, or region projects. Regarding production projects, members of the bishops' council should give their input to the following questions. Are the, what are the estimated financial and time commitments required of ward members? Second, will the project be accessible to the members? And third, will the size and type of the project be suitable for ward members? The Stake Welfare Services Committee has primary responsibility for seeing that production projects are established according to an area master plan but the Bishop's Council should feel an obligation to provide valuable insight as to the relationship between the storehouse and the various production projects. Fourth responsibility of the Bishop's Council is to review fast offering donations and expenditures. President Kimball has encouraged us to give generously in our fast offerings. The Chairman of the Council and the Stake Presidency should review all principles relating both to the payment and the use of these sacred funds. This meeting is an ideal time to ensure that this program is being properly administered. The bishops have a responsibility to see that collection of funds are properly used and that the items from the storehouse and the desert industries are always used before cash is spent outside the Lord's system. Fifth and most important is the responsibility of seeing that members work to the extent of their ability for any church assistance they receive. Fundamental to the gospel of Jesus Christ is the philosophy that men should earn their daily bread by the sweat of their brow. The council chairman should encourage discussions of good examples of how this part of the Lord's assistance plan can function in his own way. The sixth responsibility of the Bishop's Council is to provide training for the bishops in specific welfare matters. This may include on how to fill out a bishop's order form, how to analyze the needs of members, how to evaluate family resources, and to know the extent to which church assistance should be provided, how to utilize the Ward Relief Society to help needy members, and when and how to use fast offerings. Where applicable, the bishop should also receive detailed instruction regarding employment systems, bishop storehouse systems, production and processing projects, welfare services missionaries, health resources, LDS social services, and desert in industries, 
so they will know how to make appropriate use of these resources to those in need. Stake presidents have the duty, have the obligation and duty to teach the principles of welfare services and to encourage bishops to carry the same message to their members. Love and service, work and self-reliance, stewardship and consecration, the provident living that come, comes from personal and family preparedness, caring for the poor and the needy. These are principles members must learn and practice if they would live celestial lives in a celestial world. These same teachings must come down through quorum leaders as well. The State Bishops Council then provides a tremendous forum whereby bishops may discuss and obtain counsel regarding stake and region welfare operations and problems. At this meeting, the Bishops Council Chairman should inform, instruct, and inspire bishops in welfare matters. With these six, six principles in mind, it is easy for a stake bishops council under the direction of a stake president to design a meaningful agenda for each stake bishops council meeting. In summary then, these six responsibilities are, first, ensure that the Lord's warehouse, uh, storehouse functions properly. Second, develop an annual commodity production budget to provide needy commodities for the poor and the needy. Third, advise and counsel with the stake presidencies about the acquisition and management of production projects. Fourth, receive instruction from the stake presidency and develop ways to teach ward members the law of the fast and ensure the proper administration of these consecrated offerings. Fifth, plan to see that members work to the extent of their ability for the church assistance they receive. And sixth, provide training for bishops in welfare services principles and programs. I will always be grateful that I had the opportunity of growing up with the welfare plan. My father was the bishop at the time of its beginning. He had a most remarkable way of involving his family in his church assignments. At an early impressionable age, I was taught the blessing of church service. I will always remember the dignity and patience he exhibited towards those in need. I particularly remember a little old man who had lost his wife and some of the soundness of his mind. My father not only fulfilled the role of his bishop, but also that of his friend. To the family, however, this little old man was considered to be somewhat of a pest. When he would become lonely, he would always strike out to see my father. It didn't matter whether it was 10 o'clock at night or 5.30 in the morning. But my father would always welcome him into our home, give him some nourishment, then drive him back to his place of residence. I remember at the time of his passing of my father reading a letter addressed to my friend, Bishop Perry, as a final thank you for the interest my father had taken in the life of this man when he was old. I saw the tears roll down the face of my father's cheeks as he read the letter. It was then I think I recognized for the first time an understanding of the rewards of gospel service. To all the bishops there are in all the world, I ask the Lord's choicest blessings to guide and attend you. May these special moments of sweet reward for services rendered in our Father in Heaven's kingdom sustain and support you in your great and noble callings. I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.